Well, we want to bring in Assistant State Attorney Felix Vega now. You've been watching this with us all along, and today, yesterday, watching this verdict, waiting for it. Uh, not guilty. A shock to a lot of people who had supported Trayvon Martin, um, as well as his family, and wanted justice for him. A shock to you? What do you think? Does, is this a surprise? Well, we've said all along that we, they basically had a one and two shot when we were talking about murder versus not guilty, and that's common in every sort of jury trial selection and every sort of jury trial in general. And in this case, they had three opportunities to convict of murder or manslaughter or find him not guilty. It's very difficult for the jury to make those decisions. And also, why the case came to be the way it was. Angela Corey gave a press conference just a few moments ago. Here's how she explained their decision to file the charges the way that they did. We also promised that we would seek the truth for Trayvon Martin and due process for George Zimmerman, that we would get all of the facts and details of this very difficult case before a jury and that we chose to do it that way because we felt that everyone had a right to know everything about this case. She also had some very sharp words for critics of the case, claiming that the case came out in bits and pieces and that served no good to anyone who was watching this case. And she was also very critical of those in the legal community that were critics of the case that hadn't read the police reports, the discovery, everything that you and I have talked about, everything we've talked about all along over the past 15 months. But in the end, she made a good point to say we put the case forward. We did justice for Trayvon Martin, regardless of the verdict, and also gave George Zimmerman his day in court as well. You know, just a couple of hours ago, right around 6 o'clock, this evening it looked as if the jury was leaning towards manslaughter because they asked a question of the judge to, to clarify the definition of manslaughter what happened in those intervening hours between then and now since we've heard this verdict right when we were li live at six we heard the fact that they were asking the question about manslaughter the judge asked them to be more specific if they had a specific question about manslaughter we never heard from them again over the next few hours and what the jury probably did would end up go probably going back and forth we were thinking they were between manslaughter more people voting for manslaughter as opposed to not guilty and it appears in this case that there's probably more people voting for not guilty and the lone holdouts are probably still hanging on to manslaughter and obviously they fleshed that out in the intervening hours before they delivered uh, the verdict but one thing was clear obviously they wanted to get it right this was the longest session I've seen of a jury trial going you know 13 hours in one day of just deliberations and they ended it with the verdict that they handed down just about an hour ago this seemed to be a very meticulous jury uh, taking a lot of notes throughout the trial and paying attention all along. The, the defendant in this, George Zimmerman, walking out of court today, uh, tonight rather, uh, literally a free man walking out. Do you think the prosecution uh, led Trayvon Martin's family to understand that that was a very real possibility. I think based on what Angela Corey was saying earlier tonight that I think all along they had to prepare them for the realistic likelihood that George Zimmerman may walk out of a courtroom a free man and that it's not necessarily that he's not guilty or he's innocent. The jury has to make that hard determination about not guilty. They put forth the case that they did. I'm sure George or uh, Trayvon Martin's family understands. They have said that they've had confidence in the prosecution, the fact that they took up the case went forward and also got it to a jury. We saw that uh, common theme throughout the whole process here, but it's got to be very difficult. I can tell you as a prosecutor, that's one of the hardest things that you have to do is prepare a, a family, a grieving family, for a possible not guilty verdict in any case. Any chance, nobody's going to like um, 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 the verdict in terms of those who wanted Trayvon Martin's family to have justice. Uh, it's very divisive. But regardless of where you, whether you fall on one side or the other, do you think the justice system worked in this case? Yes, and that is one common theme, and again, Angela Corey did say that uh, as well. And regardless of the verdict, and if any of us are accused of a crime, we would want the same process and the same day in court, the same opportunity to prove your, um, your guilt or your innocence, you know, if you're a victim's family, if you're the defendant's family, it goes both ways. We've been having this system of justice for over 230 years, and, you know, it is what it is, whether or not you like the way it is. It's imperfect at times. The facts are imperfect at times, but we have to accept and respect the jury's verdict in the end, regardless. Felix Vega with us again tonight, and uh, we'll be checking in with you a little bit later on. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Deborah. Appreciate it.
Well, the reaction to the not guilty verdict, we have more about that on our website, myfoxtampabay.com, as well as on our Facebook page and our Twitter feed. So stay with us for continuing coverage.